Hello guys and welcome to the third part of my notebook modernization video. In the last part I cleaned this device, upgraded the memory to 2GB, replaced the old hard drive by SSD and installed a modern operation system. The notebook turned out to be quite usable, however the CPU was definitely a bottleneck. So I got curious if I can improve this notebook even more. So I decided to upgrade the CPU and ordered the most powerful which this notebook supports. I got this package some days ago. And today I'm going to upgrade the machine and see what we get. Ok, here we go. We have here a Pentium M770 with 2.13 GHz, 2 MB of cache and 533 MHz of frontside bus. I ordered this CPU from China, as you can see. It is used and I don't know if it's working. However, we will see it soon. To release the CPU you have to rotate this screw by 90 degrees. The plastic socket will slide away and release the pins. You should be able to pull out the CPU without applying any force. When inserting the new CPU pay attention to the key. This golden mark should go into the corner where the pins are missing. And again, you shouldn't apply any force inserting the CPU, don't push it, just put it into the socket, hold it with your fingers to prevent it from jumping out of the socket, and rotate the screw until the socket slides back. I have a little bit concerns about the size of the CPU cooler, because the CPU has 50% higher frequency, however the old CPU had no features for power management, and the new CPU is more power efficient, so I hope in the end it will be just enough. So the CPU is installed, and before I close the notebook I will give it a short try. The notebook turned on, this is a good sign first. I will directly go into the BIOS and see the system information. Oh, and I just realized! Look at that beautiful Pentium M icon! Here let me show you, this is how it looked before. This means that the CPU is correctly detected by the notebook, what a relief! Now let's take a look into the system information. And wow, what I see, Pentium M 2.13 GHz. This is exactly what we installed, superb. Now we can safely close the notebook and do our tests. Ok, now we are back into the operation system. Let's fire up YouTube first and see what we get. Ok, loading the page. The CPU still goes up to its limit. But after it's loaded, it seems to be quite smooth. Let's do a search. Okay, I have an impression that it feels a little bit snappier. Ok, 
Okay, this is definitely usable. However, before I took the old CPU out of the notebook, I already made some tests. So let's uh, do some benchmarking and compare the results. First, let's look at the disk I.O. performance. Unfortunately, I don't have any performance test with the original old hard drive because I already gave it back to the owner. However, I decided to make some tests with the new SSD. And at the first glance, it came out as a um, kind of bumper. The old IDE control in the notebook seemed to be a bottleneck for our SSD. I got a read performance of only 86 MB per second and write performance of 60 MB per second. These are quite low numbers because I know that this SSD can perform around 6 times faster. However, the old IDE controller was just never made for these speeds. Anyway, I would still suggest to use an SSD in this notebook. First of all, because it's new. This is important because of the data security, it doesn't matter how old the notebook is. You can just buy a new IDE drive today. So this reason seems to be obvious. But there is also one technical reason. And these are the file access times. Because the old mechanical drives could access the files around 1000 times slower than the modern SSDs. And this plays a huge role when working with a lot of small files. What is quite common in the operation system, for example, when it's booting. So this is something you can see on this benchmark. However, it makes substantial difference. And talking about the boot times, let's take a look at another benchmark. Compared with Celeron M, our Pentium M reduced the boot time from 42 seconds to only 31. I think this is quite a nice improvement. Furthermore, I compared the compilation times of Quake 2 and Doom 3 on this machine. And to give you a better idea about the results, I repeated the same tests on a more modern i5 machine and added the results to the overview as a reference. Let us first compare the Celeron M to Pentium M results. Pentium M could finish the compilation around 1 minute faster, that's around 36%. Doom was compiled on Pentium M around 6 minutes faster than on Celeron M, and this is again around 36%. These are actually really good results. However, if you compare these results to a runtime of the modern i5 CPU, they are devastating. On i5, running only with one core, the CPU finishes the compilation in around half of the time. Using all four cores, it's even seven times faster than running on the Pentium M. However, it's not quite fair to compare the i5 system with the Pentium M system, because it's not only the CPU which is running faster, it's also the SSD of the new system and so on and so on. Everything is faster, so it's not only the CPU. However, the whole system is around seven times faster anyway. And to be fair, if you compare Pentium M to um, modern, weak notebooks with um, Celeron and such things, the difference will be still quite huge, but not that great. And if you compare it even to a smaller parts like Raspberry Pi or something, it will be a lot faster. So far as I know, to compile Doom 3 on Raspberry Pi takes hours. So compared to that, these 10 minutes are not so bad. And if a uh, Raspberry Pi fulfills your requirements as a desktop computer, this notebook will do it definitely better. Now let's move on and look a little bit on the temperatures. As I told before, I had some concerns about that. However, it came out that Pentium M with its better power management and speed step technology could stay even a little bit cooler than the Celeron M. The highest temperature I measured was uh, 58 degrees on Pentium M against 61 degrees on Celeron M. That is very nice and completely overthrows my concerns. Okay, and the last benchmark in this video is about gaming. Well, long story short, this notebook is not for gaming at all. You can play games from the end of 90s with low resolution. However, in the higher resolutions, the graphic chip from Intel is a heavy bottleneck. As you can see here, in the lower resolutions, Pentium M gives us a benefit around 40% over Celeron M. However, in 1024 by 768, the graphic chips is limiting the CPU. And there is almost no measurable difference between the two CPUs anymore. No much more to say about that. So apart from gaming, this notebook works actually quite good. It's absolutely usable for the daily work. Things like text editing, uh, browsing in the internet, emails, whatsoever, works absolutely fine. The system boots quite fast and uh, reacts very snappy. With the latest Debian 10, it's safe against the modern threats and you can be sure to get support in the next years. If you ask me if I would use this notebook today, I would say, why not? 
I need something in my lab where I have my PDFs with uh, data sheets and such things. From time to time I need to search the internet for information, flash an EEPROM, connect my logic analyzer, transfer some data to a compact flash card to put it into my retro machines. All of this stuff I can do perfectly with this notebook. So yes, it fits my needs and I will definitely use it. However, there is one last but uh, probably most important step I have to do with this notebook and it's getting rid of these stickers. I mean, neither do we have Windows XP on this machine, nor do we have a Celeron M. So let's remove them and replace by something more appropriate. Okay, let's see what we have. Since I always have my hands on the notebook when I'm typing, I actually don't want to have big stickers underneath. Since I'm using Vim a lot, I think that would look great. And actually, this is it for me. I hope you enjoyed it at least as much as I did. Please leave a comment or tell me somehow if you liked it too. And I hope you will visit my channel for the next video. Thank you and goodbye.